What's up, basketball lifers? This is Atlas Insider, your look at who makes Atlas work. Check, Check it out! out. What's up, Asphalt Lifers? It's Lauren here with Tiara with your December edition of Atlas Insider. Uh, we're super excited to come to talk to you guys today, and we have got a special guest joining us today, Miss Sherry Holmes. Hey, Sherry, how are you? Hi, guys, how are you? We're so, Great. we're Thank so you. good. We're so good, yes. And we're so excited to have you join us here with Atlas Insider. I gotta ask off the bat, Sherry, what was it like growing up with Mike Holmes as your dad? Oh my goodness. It was so weird. I'm going to be honest. I was, I feel like I was still in elementary school or was I in high school at this point when he started? I can't really remember, remember my age, but I was so weirded out by it because he said he went and did um, some set design for someone who had a television show on HGTV and this is what he tells me. He was talking a lot as he generally does and um, said something to a vice president for that company and they said they wanted to shoot a pilot with him to start a show and he was, he, so he came home and he's like, hey guys, uh, I'm gonna be on TV. It's like, why? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I remember the first time he got recognized, we were out uh, with him over the weekend. I think we were shopping at a mall and someone stopped him and started talking to him and I just kind of stood there and I was like, what is happening? What is what is going on here? I don't understand. Right. So it was just strange concept to me. I didn't really understand. And then once you realize you're like, oh, okay, well now it makes sense. Cause you know, like I also have Mike Holmes come over and the first thing he's going to do is look around and be like, well, why would you do that? That's not very level. That doesn't look great there, Sherry. I'm like, All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mike. Holmes. <laughs> yeah. If you ever yeah. have him, over, he's probably checking out everything around your house. Yeah. Very, very opinionated. And which is what we love about Mike. He's always making it right. So Sherry, <laughs> Tell us, as you you said you, you kind of figured out this in high school or maybe a little bit earlier, what inspired you to pursue a career in this same field and to work with your dad? Okay, so that's a bit of a tricky question, only because I didn't realize that I wanted a career in the trades. I didn't think it was really an option for me being a female, which is a silly thing to think. It was terrible, but I didn't, I didn't realize that I could have a great career working construction. Um, when I was in middle school, I, if, in order for me to take a shop class, I had to take half a semester of home ec. So I had to learn to cook and clean. I had to take care of a nylon baby that I made in order to go and learn how to use a bandsaw, uh, which was, I, I feel like it's very strange now. Why do I need to learn how to run a household in order to build things? But, right. Right. That's wild. Well, right. It's a bit weird. But yeah. I did it and you know, I'm probably better for it, I suppose, in the long run, because I got to understand what I do and do not like and what I want to pursue in a career and what I do not want to pursue in a career. Um, and I really did not think I would work in construction. Um, I, I just kind of, you know, flew by the seat of my pants my whole life. All I wanted to do was work and travel. So I'd work odd jobs, save money and go travel the world. And my dad, um, wow. He, he harassed me for a long time. He's like, just try it. Try the construction site. I was like, no, I don't want to work with you. I don't want to do this. But in my free time after work and on weekends, I would actually help out our construction crew. So I was doing it, but in my head, I wasn't actually participating in it. So I think it was kind of maybe a rebellious thing um, that I didn't want to get involved. And then uh, mm -hmm. when we, I forget the year, um, but I had just turned 21. We flew down to New Orleans and um, we built the first home after Hurricane Katrina. And I have never left the, the not the career, I've never left the site, I've never left the crew. Um, I've been doing construction since. That's great. That's great, yeah. Let me ask you then too, uh, it does seem, you know, just having a tiny bit of insight into your and your dad's relationship, just seeing how you guys work together. Um, was how, what was your dad's perspective when you were younger like that and he was like just give it a try i mean it seems to me like he would be on your side like you can do anything women can do anything you yeah. know come to my construction site and hold your own my dad's always 
very, very supportive of women in the trades um, and doing whatever you want to do. Like he's never stopped me from doing anything in life. Um, whether it was traveling around the world and not really taking a career seriously, he backed me up for it and he supported my choices um, and then pushed me into challenging myself and being becoming a woman in the skilled trades and a woman in construction and he was always like you can do you can do this i've seen you do this so why not try something and and give it a go for yourself and honestly if, if i didn't have him i don't think i would be in this career without him so he's yeah. been a great supporter an influence um a guidance counselor almost like he's he's really brought yeah. me all of this and he still teaches me things i will not tell him that because he'd love to hear it. <laughs> Yeah. still that's great yeah that's really no, great that's, that's yeah i mean i think it's it's so cool to you know actually not take it seriously and then see the impact you mentioned um katrina that you were able to build your first job on a katrina job site and help those um people as they recovered from katrina that's awesome is there a favorite memory that you have of a particular job um that's really resonated with you over the years so that job is actually one of my favorites because it was my very first job, but we built an entire house from the ground up. We built a house on stilts wow. so that if should there be another flooding in the Lower Ninth Ward, the house wouldn't be damaged. It's up above water level. Um, mm -hmm. We we just did some amazing things. I learned how to read a tape measure. So I actually failed uh, measurement in math when I was younger. I, I'm not great at math. I'm not great with numbers and I'm not afraid to admit it because no one's good at everything. Um, of course, and right. I, yeah, I, I learned how to read a measuring tape on that site. I used to hide around the corner and my brother would like try to explain how to read what a measurement was and how to understand or, and how to count to even start doing it. Um, we worked seven days a week. We worked from 7 a.m. until at least 7 p.m. at night. It was a long job. It was super hot, but I loved every second of it. And my other favorite job, um, actually in Ontario, we built, we rebuilt a, um, a park and it was actually a castle. So I got to build a castle and that's oh, cool. actually really cool. That's, yeah, that's very cool. That's very cool. Uh, let me ask you, so working with your brother, I mean, Michael, of course, Mike Jr. Um, is around and I know he's worked with both of you and your dad for years. How's that working with a sibling as well as your dad? I mean, you've got to have some <laughs> uh, rivalry as well as, you know, having a really good rapport with each other. I mean, when we were younger, it was terrible. I'll, I'll be very honest. It was really hard working with your family, especially a sibling that's, yeah. you know, we're, we're about two years apart in age. Um, so you're in the same places, you're going through the same growth changes, whatever in life. Um, so when we were younger, it was bad. We would fight on site. We probably couldn't really be on the same job site for the most part. Um, but now it's great. Uh, we, we all, we're all grown up. We have our, I actually have another sister that nobody knows about, but we do have, there's three of us. Um, and we, we all have our own lives. And so when you get to see each other, it's generally on a job site and we just try to separate work um, from our family life now. So we're going to be celebrating a Christmas, a gathering this weekend. And it's going to be fun. You know, you have drinks, you tell jokes. My brother's actually super funny. So that always makes um, <laughs> okay, more enjoyable. So let me ask you, we know, I mean, if anybody follows you at all on any of the social media platforms, they know that you are a mom and you yeah. are active and you, you know, you are definitely a voice and a force in construction, but that's not all there is to Sherry Holmes, right? There's there's a couple of little girls, there's a husband, there's there's a whole family um, yeah. in addition, in addition to what you do with your dad and your brother. Uh, how how does that affect what you do, being a working mom and having a couple of little girls at home that you're, you know, ultimately the the ultimate role model for? Oh my goodness, I have the utmost, utmost respect for any parent. I had no idea the challenges, the challenges that parenting can <laughs> It is a lot of work. I only have two, and I still think two is crazy. I'm averaging four hours of sleep. Because once my little one wakes up, I can't get back to sleep. I'm thinking about what I have to do the next day or about yeah. the job. And I don't yeah. like, so I work all day, just like everyone else does. And then I work when I get home and then you got to do all the meals and you got to keep up a household. Yeah. Because has to and there's overnight wakes and feedings or um it's just a lot and some some babies are easier than others and i love my girls they're great but they are challenging at times to say the least yeah. so it's really yeah. 
kind of a juggling game. Um, but uh, you figure it out along the way. It's just been, I remember when I was pregnant with my first daughter, um, I had no idea what I was in for. I went to, where was I? I can't remember now, but I was in the States. Um, mm. It was warm. <laughs> uh, Nashville, I was in Nashville. Oh, perfect. Um, I was very pregnant and I was at the women's women and roofing show. Mm. And I was speaking to a room full of women. And one of the things I asked is, how many of you have kids? And almost every woman put their hand up. And I was like, oh, okay. So we can do this. You can work yeah. in the tr and still have children. Other women are doing it, why can't I? And I honestly thought I would lose my job having a kid. Mm -hmm. I didn't work anymore. I had no idea how to get yeah. everything done, but you just kind of have to and you do it. Yeah. Women yeah. are- that's the truth. And let me say real quick, shout out National Women in Roofing. Uh, Atlas is a yeah. proud platinum sponsor of the organization. They do some great work connecting women across the industry and providing resources and bringing in fantastic speakers such as yourself. Um, so yeah, we just want to say, you know, we, we always appreciate the work that they do as well. Cause you're right. Being a working mom is hard. Being a working mom in a male dominated industry is harder. Uh, but having a good support staff around you having uh, working for a good company and having you know a supportive family definitely definitely lightens the load absolutely and just realizing that other people are in the same situation so you're not alone even if you feel alone um it's right. tra it challenges but you work your way through and it's all worth it in the end yeah and i yeah. i, I all what I another takeaway from that is I hope my girls grow up to realize that they can do anything they want whatever they want for for work go to for school I am all for it experience the world try whatever you think you'll like um, so I really yeah. think in the trades has made me a more open-minded parent I hope anyway. absolutely <laughs> with regard you mentioned um, NWIR I think we were together Ooh. when you were there speaking that at that oh. event and I remember how pregnant you were, which is so fun. Now <laughs> that, you know, two girls under your belt, what does balance look like? Like, do you have a regimen or, you know, what does that look like in terms of um, your work life and um, home life balance? Um, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> um, it is, I do have a bit of a regimen. It doesn't always work out the way I want it, um, but because my youngest, yeah waking up in the middle of the night and she stays up for longer periods of time. Um, and then I'm awake. I can't get myself back to sleep. So I've been awake since 2 a.m. And I try yeah. to get up, I get out of bed, I work out. Um, and then I, I feel like that really wakes me up for the day and gets me ready for anything. So yeah. I am tired, but I've been in a good mood and I've been ready to go. And it just gets my head in the space that it needs to be to parent, work, or do any, accomplish anything because I can't if I don't have something for myself at some point. And I think that is my biggest balance is just making time for me, whether that's at 5 a.m. unfortunately, or whenever right. I can fit. But otherwise it's yeah, a juggle. I'm gonna drop some balls and it happens. Yeah, no, I think we all find ourselves in the, that spot when, when it comes to juggling. Lauren has two, I have three, and it's always really fun figuring out what that looks like. But I think the biggest takeaway is what you said, which is finding that spot of that one place, whether it's 30 minutes to work out or going for a run or sitting silently in your room in the dark, whatever that looks yeah. like for you time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always, it's always rewarding and you always thank yourself later, so. Yeah. You need it. Everyone needs a little bit of time to yourself. I'll stare at a wall for a little while if I need to. It's fine. <laughs> Sometimes just sitting in silence is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No one's, all, no one's asking you for something. I swear the right. amount of times mm -hmm. day is shocking. Yeah. Or the, the amount of times that they say mom, which is, of course, a blessing, right? It's a <laughs> blessing, but it is like, uh, you know, they're the alternative of the silence and the peace and the quiet and giving yourself that space oh, can yeah. be everything, right? Yeah, the break, definitely. Yeah. What are you working on in the new year? What do you have planned um, in that schedule, that tight schedule oh. that you've got? 
Oh my goodness. Um, I'm there, first of all, I'm very excited to be working with you guys. I'm so excited to be on the website and the videos we get to shoot together and the fun we're having, even just having this conversation. It's been great. It's wonderful, wonderful to work with other women who are in, under the umbrella of skilled trades and you work in a male dominated industry. I work in a male dominated industry and we get to connect on that level. Um, in the new year, we are still filming season two of Holmes Family Effect. Uh, Holmes Rescue? Home something. We have a lot of Holmes shows. I actually don't know. I think it's Holmes Family Rescue. You do. Hashtag Holmes, Holmes Family. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, Holmes something we're doing now. So we're still filming. I just got off a job site today, so I'm actually covered in concrete dust. Um, but uh, lots of filming. I have, I'm actually taking some time out for me in the new year, which is surprising. Um, but uh, I'm going to have a couple of vacations booked which is nice we don't always get the chance to uh, and then we are working with another um online streaming um company company yeah an online streaming service it, that sounds better an online streaming service um and that's really great so we're going to be starting another project with them coming up probably in the next couple of months so it's going to be very very hectic and very busy but when isn't yeah. it and you no know, you, you shouldn't complain when you're busy busy is good yeah busy is so good that's yeah great. well sherry thank you so much for spending time with us on the atlas insider and giving us a look on the inside of all the different things that you have going on and kudos to you for all your success yeah, thank you so we appreciate you for sure it was super fun let's do it again sometime that's right all right well thank you so much happy holidays to all of our asphalt lifers out there and we will see you soon take care happy bye guys bye